Hi, this is Pastor Mike Bowen from East Lumberton Baptist Church, and welcome to You Ask For It. During this time, again, my goal behind this Bible study is to give you some answers to questions that many folks have concerning God's Word. It's not a time for debate or the time for a big argument, but our goal is to help you understand the Word of God more clearly. Now, today's question I want to answer is this. What are besetting sins? The Word of God speaks about this over in the book of Hebrews. It talks about the sin that so easily besets us. So what is a besetting sin? Listen to God's Word at a verse I want to share. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and here it is, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. In Hebrews 12, the writer of Hebrews is talking about how the Christian life is oftentimes compared to a race. It's like running a race. When you first get saved, the gun goes off and the race begins, and you run for the glory of God, and one day we're going to cross that finish line. As Paul said, Paul said, I fought a good fight, I've kept the faith and I finished my course. And so when God saves your soul, we're called to run a race. Now, if you ever watch a race on TV or watch runners in a lane, everybody has their own lane they run in. If they swap lanes, they'll collide with somebody or be disqualified, but they get in that lane and they run that race. And there's times they have, they have hurdles in the way or there's folks on the outside that are screaming to them, talking to them, but their goal is to run that race and keep their eyes on the prize and not stray off course, but run to the end. Well, the same goes for a child of God. When God saves your soul, you begin your race and you're called to run that race well and not be distracted and not get off course and cross that finish line one day and receive the rewards that come at the end. Well, listen to God's word. The Bible says, oh, wherefore sin we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. What are the cloud of witnesses? I believe the, the cloud of witnesses are those in the past who have run the race well and have now gone to heaven. I believe the cl cloud of witnesses in God's word refers to the Old Testament saints, all the saints of God that ran their race. They're cheering you on. Like in a race, many times you have folks on the sidelines that are cheerleaders. If you watch basketball or watch a a football game. You have cheerleaders that cheer the players on. Well, the Bible says we as children of God are alive on this earth, running a race for God. And there's those who ran a race for us who are cheering us on. There's the saints of old cheering us on. We have the angels in heaven that are cheering us on. So the Bible says there's a cloud of witnesses of, of past saints and angels that are cheering you on in the race. Then it says, as you run that race and these witnesses cheer you on, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Now, why does God speak of weights? Well, back in the um, days of the races, when they would train, they trained by wearing weights. By putting weights on their feet, they would train making their legs stronger. But when it was time for the race, they would drop the weights and run the race, obviously, because why would a person run a race wearing weights? They drop the weights and they'd go a whole lot faster because they train wearing the weights. And so many times we as children of God, we get weighted down by our past. We get saved by the grace of God. And the old devil, he brings our past back up to remind us. We get weighted down by concerns, weighted down by depression, weighted down by um, bad feelings of not being good enough, uh, all kinds of things that weight us down. And God says we get slowed down in our race because we allow the weights to get in the way. So God said, take the weights off and run that race well. But here's the main part I want to share. Uh, let them lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. What is that sin? that does so easily beset you. Now bear in mind, that word beset means entangles you. He's not talking about any certain sin because that sin could differ from person to person. For example, the sin that besets you may not be the sin that besets me. And the sin that besets me may not be the sin that besets you. See, Satan knows your weak spot. He knows that one sin that entangles you time and time again. See, when God saved our soul, the Bible says, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. But there's still those certain sins sometimes that entangle us and get us in a web of the sea and choke us sometimes and cause cause us to fall out of our race sometimes or not run our race well. For example, there's a lot of folks who say, preacher, my sin that besets me is smoking. I have a hard time with smoking. In my past, I smoked a lot, so therefore I have a hard time putting that down. Some might say the sin that besets them is drinking. Maybe in their past life, they were an alcoholic and they have a hard time getting around alcohol. It besets them. One might say the sin that besets me is lust. In my past life, before I got saved, I was involved in pornography and all kinds of bad things there. Therefore, that stuff draws me in. So what I'm saying is Satan knows the very soon Sin that have beset you. So the sin, the Bible says, that so easily besets you is the sin that entangles you every single time. See, there are some sins that, that don't tempt me at all. For example, you can't tempt me with alcohol. You can't tempt me with drugs. You can't tempt me with smoking. Because even when I was lost, I didn't smoke, drink, or do drugs. Had no desire to. Therefore, you could dangle a beer in front of me. That's not going to bother me. You could dangle a cigarette in front of me, smoke in front of me. You can blow smoke in my face. It's not going to bother me. That sin does not easily beset me. But for a man who drank all the time, like my stepfather, my 
My stepfather will tell you he was a heavy alcoholic. He'll tell you right now. If he drinks beer right now, if you give him one beer, he's back in that trap again because that's the sin that can easily beset him. Because in his previous life, when he was lost, he was drinking all the time. And so what I'm saying is God knows what it is. Some might say, preacher, mine is gluttony. I can't seem to put this food down. I know it's wrong, but I can't put it down. So what I'm saying is the sin that besets you is the one sin or two sins or three sins. But the main thing, Satan knows your weak spot and he'll use it every single time. Even though you're saved, you're still walking the fleshly body. You still fight an old carnal nature and the devil knows that. So guess what? He'll take the sin that was your prominent sin when you were lost. And when you're saved, he'll keep bringing it back up. He'll put it before your face and try to cause you to fall because his goal is to beset you and stop you in that race because Satan knows if you run that race well and lay aside those weights and lay that sin aside and just don't fall back into it, you're going to run that race well. So his goal is to beset you in the race by using that one sin or two sins or three sins that Satan knows will cause you to fall. Now the question is, how do you overcome it? The Bible says we're called to stand against temptation, resist it, and submit to God and let God fight for us. Greater he is in me than he that dwells in the world. And the psalmist says, the man is blessed whose mind is stayed on God. That's why Paul said in Romans 12 too, we have to renew our mind because friends, when you were lost, your mind's a memory bank of all kinds of bad things. All the bad things in your past you did are in your mind. Your past habits, your past sins, they plague your mind. So when you get saved, the devil, he's going to work on that mind. He's going to feed your mind and tell you just take that drink again. Smoke that cigarette again. A lust again. He'll feed your mind all these things. Therefore, you got to say Lord, renew my mind. Let my mind be stayed on you that God, I won't, I won't think on these things. I won't focus on these things. And God, these sins won't beset me anymore. So the Bible does say you can overcome the besetting sins of the child of God. For the Bible says there's no temptation that's taken you, but such as is common with man. But every temptation God will make a way of escape. So friends, a besetting sin is the one or two or three sins that trap you every single time, that entangle you every single time. But God does say you can have victory in the Lord Jesus Christ and you can overcome that sin. Join me in prayer. Father God, we love you and we thank you, Lord, now for this time to share from the word of God today. And Father, I pray that we'll cling to you, Lord, and not allow the sin that so easily besets us, Lord, to trap us and entangle us and get us out the race. Father, I pray we'll run that race well, lay aside our weights and lay aside that sin that besets us, God, and run that race. And as Paul said, to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God, I pray we'll cling to that truth, for I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week for our next study in U.S. for